So, so this question, um, it doesn't have a lot of word description and um, it, it, it's because it's uh, meant to illustrate one of the uh, most useful analytical tool that we have for analyzing thermodynamic processes that you will see in this class. Um, so when we talk about thermodynamic system in this class, this semester, we are really talking about system of gas. So when you specify pressure and volume of the gas, so that gives you a lot of information. And um, so when you have processes illustrated on a PV diagram, um, it, it, um, it, it saves a lot of words <laughs> that otherwise would be needed to describe the processes going on. So, so we'll get started just with this figure. You know, figure illustrates a few thermodynamic processes with these paths that are illustrated here. And um, we'll answer the questions. So it says, calculate the work done by the gas in quasi-static processes. Um, by the way, this is almost <laughs> redundant. Whenever you have paths drawn in a PV diagram, they have to be quasi-static because what quasi-static means is that at every step of the way, there is a uh, the process happens slowly enough that there is a well-defined pressure and volume and temperature and other thermodynamic quantities. So if some process happened so quickly or happened in such a way that you do not have well-defined pressure and volume at every point, then you can't draw a path. Drawing a path uh, implies that you have a quasi-static process. So, uh, <laughs> so we have quasi-static processes represented by these paths. Um, so uh, I guess I'm limiting myself to the those starting at A and ending at B. So if you have work done along path A B, uh, this is what I want you to illustrate. So for work done, so. On a PV diagram, work done has a very graphical representation. It's the area under the curve. And this comes naturally from our thermodynamic version of work done. So from mechanics, you remember work as force times displacement. And in the lecture, we've I think I've shown the derivation of how starting from this, um, you can in terms of the thermodynamic quantities, you can express the infinitesimal work done as pressure times a small change in volume. So if we are talking about some kind of net work done or total amount of work done over some change of volume, then the total amount of work done over some change of volume from A to B would be integral of um, pressure as a function of volume um, with the integral being done with respect to volume B. So, and if you recall back to your calculus class, the graphical representation of this integral is what we call area under the curve. And there are some things you do have to watch out for. Um, whether you count this area as being positive or negative, it depends on direction. If you are going from left to right, so that you are going from smaller volume to larger volume, then the area under the curve is positive and the system does positive work. On the other hand, uh, oh, I guess we don't have any here. If somehow there was a process going the other way, then there would be negative work done by the system or work done being on the system. So, so this uh, area illustrated here, that's the work done along path A, B. Let me just uh, um, mark up all the work done. <laughs> Let me try to color code them this way. The work done along A, D, B would be all of this area under the curve. And I'm just gonna color in this portion, but it also includes um, all the area that was under um, A, B also. Um, work done along path ACB, so that would be work done along ACB, that would be, so path is this, and we want the area under that curve. So I'm just gonna color the portion that I haven't colored before, but it also includes everything under this curve. So um, all of the yellow before and some portion of the green previously. 
and work on along ADCB. Okay, that's uh, this rectangle thing. Let me color that with um, so that would uh, so again. I'm only gonna color the portion that I haven't colored before, but it also includes everything under this. So. So at this point, it's a kind of a geometry exercise. When you look at the area under A, B, when you look at this area, it's an area of a rectangle. It's a rectangle of height 1 and width 2. Now, you do have to watch out for the unit. Um, so the... Um, Looking at this uh, geometric shape, it's uh, easy to calculate that this uh, area should be height times the width or um, one atmosphere times two liter. And uh, this is correct as far as it goes. The only challenge is that the question is asking for um, number in unit of kilojoule. So you, what you could do is you could do the unit conversion. So if you are doing, you need, if you are converting from atmosphere liter to kilojoules, this is what you would do. So you have two atmosphere liter and to convert it to kilojoule or the basic SI unit uh, divided by thousand, then um, you do this by multiplying by one at each step. So you need to convert atmosphere to some basic SI unit. Um, so that would be unit of Pascal. So you multiply by one, um, or you construct this ratio that's designed to have the same quantity on the numerator and the denominator. So on your denominator, I want one atmosphere so that it cancels out the atmosphere. On the numerator, if I remember this right, it should be one, 101,300 Pascal. Um, and Pascal is the you know, Newton per meter squared, SI unit of pressure, times. And you do have to convert liter to the basic SI unit also. So for that, I would need a ratio of, um, so I need something uh, in the quantity of liters on the denominator, and I need to convert it to cubic meter. Um, that's the basic SI unit of volume. And cubic meter is a really large volume. One cubic meter is actually a thousand liters. So, so this is another one because this ratio has same quantity on the numerator and denominator. So with that, you cancel atmosphere, liter, and you have Pascal times cubic meter, and that should give you joule. So the number you get here will be in joules and you convert joules to kilojoules to answer here. So you can do that, uh, do that by hand, please, <laughs> or know how to do that by hand. Um, oftentimes I would use Wolfram Alpha as a shortcut and, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> it, Wolfram Alpha is a wonderful tool. You are welcome to use it just to um, make sure that you know how to do it by hand in the rare occasions when you do have to. Um, the rest of the, this is, same geometric exercise. So A, D, B is going to be area of this uh, trapezoid that I have to work out. So the area of the trapezoid, if I remember right, it would be the sum of these lengths. I forget what they are called. So uh, one plus three multiplied by this uh, dimension here and then divided by two. So it would be one plus three times two divided by two in the units of atmosphere liter. So for the correct answer, you'll have to convert to kilojoule, um, either using Wolfram Alpha or by hand. Uh, yeah. So this question turns out to be lots of geometry exercise. So ACB, um, you can see that here it's the same geometric shape as ADB, just flipped around. So in this case, the amount of work done will be same as before, because area under the curve is the same. Um, so before you were at higher pressure and lower volume, so more of the work was done as um, as as the it was expanding from lower volume in the path ACB. More of the work is done at the higher end of the volume, and for the total work done, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's the same either way. 
Um, ADCB is easier. It's a, a rectangle again, so it's just gonna be um, three atmosphere times two um, liters. So uh, three atmosphere times two liter. Again, convert the unit to kilojoule for a correct answer or answer that this time will recognize as correct. Okay, so for each of the paths listed, choose the correct category of the thermodynamic process. Okay, um, AC, that's uh, this path here. Oh, so one thing that you will uh, see in this uh, question is that a lot of the thermodynamic processes um, don't have name. So AC, this uh, line that's not horizontal or vertical on the PV diagram, it's uh, none of the four. It just, uh, there's no name for a process like this. It's because uh, there isn't some quantity that we are keeping constant. Um, with uh, isobaric or isochoric processes, we are keeping pressure or volume constant. With the isothermal process, we are keeping the temperature constant and that results in something that looks like a one over X graph. Now with the adiabatic, we are keeping the heat transfer constant or zero and that results in some curvy looking thing that's <laughs> not easy to dis distinguish from isotherm on uh, just uh, eyeballing. But So AC is none of those. We are not keeping anything constant here. So it's none of the four. DB, it's the same deal. Along this path here, we're not keeping anything constant. So none of the four. DC, uh, okay, that is now isobaric. We are constant at three atmosphere there. So this should be A, AD, it's isochoric. We are keeping the same volume in the path A to D. Uh, CB, that's uh, isochoric again, um, uh, same volume. So a, B, again, isobaric. So uh, none of these paths were going to be isothermal or adiabatic. And um, I don't think, uh, so once you are given specific path with enough information, um, it should be relatively rare for you to answer this. Because um, for you to say, there's an insufficient information. I guess that would be where if you have some curved path and you don't have information, enough information to say that it's either isothermal or adiabatic, then you would have to say, oh, we don't know if it's, uh, <laughs> it could be isothermal or adiabatic, but there is enough specification in the question to figure that out. Um, and for C, let, instead of answering it directly, I'll just say, um, if you are dealing with the isochoric process, no work is done. It really comes from all the way back to how we describe the work. So work done necessarily because um, for infinitesimal amount of work done, it involves infinitesimal amount of volume change. You must have volume change for there to be any work done. Their analog for the back in the mechanics would be you need to have some displacement for there to be work done. So, um, so isochoric process, uh, constant volume processes are the processes that describe when no volume is changing, so no work is being done. Uh, any other process where volume changes, <laughs> there is some work being done at some 